peoples of the universe, please attend carefully. The message that follows is vital to the future of you all. Greetings, fellow wanderers in the fourth dimension. I'm Emma Foster. And I'm Michael Mould. And we're the hosts of the greatest show in the galaxy, Simpsons Syndicated's foray into all things Doctor Who. From the old... Hey, Doctor Who. What are you talking about? To the new... I'm the Doctor. I'm worse than everybody's aunt. From the good... We all may go one. We are the superior beings. To the bad... No, not the mind's pro. From the sublime... Don't blink. Don't even blink. Blink and you're dead. To the ridiculous. My dreams of conquest. We'll be sharing our thoughts and feelings across the broad spectrum of the Hooniverse. You're serious, aren't you? About what I do, yes. Not necessarily the way I do it. That's the greatest show in the galaxy, part of the simply syndicated 21st century media network. Splendid fellows, all of you. This leads us nicely into the other thing I did was I went to the Leeds International Film Festival for one night only, but that one night was for Night of the Dead. Yeah, so after a, um, well, I was working up north and I managed to tie everything in quite neatly. That was actually the day I saw Gravity as well. And then uh, our, our good friend Jonathan Bloody Wilkinson from the Greatest Events in Sport in History podcast was going to see a movie before Night of the Dead started. So I sort of, I, I gate crashed that. I just sort of invited myself along. You didn't mind, did you, Jonathan? Uh, no, not really. Okay, good. No, uh, sharing Japanese craziness is always a good idea. <laughs> we have to mention this movie, okay? <laughs> it doesn't really fit our genre. But I'm actually looking for the right page now. What was it called? Hong Kong Forbidden Hero or something? Uh, HK Forbidden Superhero, which stands oh, for... Oh, HK. Is... Hentai... Hentai Carmen. Some... Hentai Carmen, which is a, a, about a guy who gets superpowers when he puts panties on his head. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I have not laughed so much in a movie for a long time. Or felt quite so uncomfortable, I have to say, as this <laughs> man creates... He basically puts women panties on his face and he becomes this superhero with his tighty whities on. Um, but he realises that if he pulls the sides of the pants that he's wearing on his lower half up over his shoulders in a mankini kind of a way, he gets even more superpowers. Oh thus creating God. the largest bulging pouch you've ever seen, which is then his <laughs> superpower focus point that he can rub in people's faces to defeat them. I shit you not. <laughs> The opening scene's amazing. <laughs> but, yeah, we'd ruin all the best punchlines. We would. It, is a, it, it was a fun <laughs> film. But got me in the mood. It was just how the giggles got more and more awkward as it went on. <laughs> so, yeah, that was that was interesting. So we had to run out of that and then run around the corner. To my great delight, I realised that... I, I didn't know this, but you had a group of friends who were also uh, going to the event who were already in the queue. So we just sort of barged into the queue next to them, which... Yeah, we did. It's always a sound plan, isn't it? <laughs> Put someone in the queue before you. Although, it didn't sell out this year. No, it seemed quite spacious in there, actually. Yeah, it, it was this year. I don't know whether it's just because of the uh, the people... I don't know. People is moved from four films to five films, which obviously adds to the runtime. Because it used to start at midnight. Oh, right. And now it starts at ten. And I don't know whether people like five films. Oh, man. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a long time. I will actually get to the... Um, I'm going to be very brutally honest about the whole process a bit later on. Um, but there is also a Day of the Dead. And this is why we've asked um, Jonathan to join us. Because he attended that as well. And I couldn't. Um, so there was obviously more horror movies there. 
Which is a shame because my friend won a free ticket. Yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, we won everything that night. I won a pencil. You you won the stack of shit DVDs. Did I really win? Did I really win? <laughs> <laughs> they do, Gordon, they, they do they do a shit movie amnesty. So you bring a shit movie, you hand it in, then they hold them up at the end, and everybody cheers at the most shit movie there. And Jonathan managed to bring the most shit movie, so he won all the other shit movies that people have brought. <laughs> oh, awesome. I kind of played the, a meta game, though, because I brought a film on that was, like, there, like, three years before that, that was notoriously bad, <laughs> called Seventh Moon, which stars Amy Smart. <laughs> I'm never watching this movie. Oh, you should watch this movie, it's great. <laughs> hey, can post it, me. I'll stick it in the beers for Boz section. <laughs> no, I wouldn't do that to you. <laughs> But yeah, there's a sister program which is called Day of the Dead, which runs during the day as opposed to at night, um, which is midday till I think finish about eleven o'clock this year. It seems shorter. Is there less um, films? Um, there is a collection of short films. Is it? Yeah, it is shorter. They tend to run. Well, it's eleven hours though. Oh, yeah, it's a long yeah. time. It just seemed to be less yeah. films on the list. That was all. But. but... Uh, yeah, there's there's four films, main films, mm. and then they have the Silver Melier competition, which is short films that are entered for a European-wide like horror genre mm. short film competition, and the winners are from the various festivals that are associated with it, which Leeds is one, go on to compete for the main prize at the end of the year. Uh-huh. But we'll get to that, because I'll do the films. Okay. <laughs> Um, I have to also shout out the. I, I, um, for, excuse my ignorance. I don't know the guys who present the evening, but they were hilarious. Um, just coming up and just giving a shit in between movies, and um, they did a a hashtag tweet thing where you could watch a movie and then tweet a tagline for the movie, um, which I started dutifully doing, and I was quite pleased with myself. But no, I think I only got one read out. But when I did, I won a pencil. So you did, I did win, win a pencil. pencil. <laughs> <laughs> So I'll, we might drop those in later if they're any good. And it wouldn't really matter if the beer was flat. Because I'm a country girl at heart. Where the atmosphere is great. I'd love, love to have, have a beer with Patrick. Because Reggie's me, mate. <laughs> Change cake. I love to have oh, you know what? Maybe them bags can wait. I'll just take you straight to your festival thingy, eh? Really? That'd be great. Uh, Christ, here we go. <laughs> Maybe we should pull over and give him some air. Yeah. Yep. All right. <laughs> they win. <laughs> Let's pull over, see what they want. Oh, they can hold on a bit, eh? Come on. For your country cousin. Oh, just a quick breather then. Wait here, eh? Sure, I'll keep an ear out for the ad. It is a little pongy, isn't it? Who's he talking to? Hey, mate, I just remembered I've got this allergy to marsupial fur breaking out in a rash. So there you go. You've had a bit of air. Now, why don't you get back in and I'll I'll get you to your festival ASPC. Open the bloody doors, man. How are you pufters doing back there? The the boys are doing fine. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll just close her up. So um, the first movie was A uh, Hundred Bloody Acres, which I, I kept annoyingly calling A Hundred Acres of Blood for some reason, <laughs> thus yeah, killing the pun <laughs> entirely. <laughs> yeah, my mate Adam was like, no, it's A Hundred Bloody Acres. It's a pun, boss. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, it was nice that he could be berate me that well, having just met me. He obviously felt comfortable <laughs> around me, so that, that's a good thing. Uh, I loved this movie. I'd seen yeah, the trailer, yeah. I wanted to stick around at Fright Fest and see it, but it was the one that was on after VHS 2, and I couldn't stick around that late. So I was very pleased to see it made this list. Do, do you want to synopsisize it? Yeah, it's a horror comedy, definitely call it a horror yes. comedy, about two brothers who 
take dead bodies that they happen to find next to the end of next to the road and turn them into prize winning fertilizer on yeah <laughs> and of course dead bodies at the side of the road in australia happens quite a lot if you've seen wolf creek and things like that yeah <laughs> i was about to say um, is it dead bodies as in animal bodies or dead bodies as in humans or both or anything the, yeah it's mainly humans but uh yeah <laughs> i think they they so, start with roadkill don't they but they do it with they yeah there's this there's this legend of uh, a group of people who were called the something six i can't remember what it was but uh, famously just disappeared off the face of the earth and they were never found and you're like you instantly know where they went <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay. so that was the best crop of fertilizer they ever made okay um and one of the, they basically pick up a group of well one of them picks up a group of hitchhikers um after picking up a dead body mm. and then it goes on from yeah. there <laughs> I don't really want to say much more no. about the, the plot and the best jokes and stuff, but there is some awesome stuff. Yes. Great performances. Actually very funny. It's really hard to fault as a film, actually. I, there's nothing that took me out of it or pissed me off, or I just I, I grinned and smiled and laughed my way through it right to the end, so I thought that was fantastic. Yeah, highly recommended. It's probably one of the best films I've seen at Night of the Dead. So I think the, com- the comedy ones tend to go down a bit better. Well, it's that sort of group thing, isn't it? I think... yeah. Well, rather than us prattling on about it, we should listen to us prattling on about it afterwards, because I took some audio in the cinema for a couple of these movies. So, have a listen. So, we just watched 100 Acres of Blood, which I missed at Fright Fest. There we go. And we're now seeing it at Night of the Dead. Nearly right, 100 Bloody Acres. 100, 100, 100, 100, I keep calling it the other... Yeah, 100 <laughs> Bloody Acres. Because it's a pun, you see. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get my coat. <laughs> what do we think? It was excellent, yeah, really good. Um, but really funny. Um, not particularly horror-y. Uh, there's a little bit of gore in it, but yeah. most, mostly just funny. Yeah, as there's... comedy horrors go, it's, it's up there for it's me. There, yeah, because it was actually funny. You know? yeah. I mean, most, of the time, <laughs> most of the time they fall flat. So the part that stands out for me is the part that the entire cinema, as one just went, <laughs> which is when a character... Spoilers! Yeah. <laughs> We've previously established um, Chekhov's cum rag. <laughs> and it comes into effect when a character loses part of their hand. Here, use my hand key. The film for me. Awesome. My, my, I, th- he wants my potassium. That is just yes. such a quotable yeah. line. He wants my potassium. And this is going to be great for your listeners who are like the court in a movie that I haven't seen. <laughs> no, it was actually real fun. fun, fun Fairyland on Acid was good as well. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. That entire section was good. I think it's, it's a good mark because I, I saw the trailer and I thought uh, all the funny bits just going to be in the trailer and that's normally what you get. And then, you know, I, there was a lot more funny bits not in the trailer, so I was quite pleased by that. Oh, I thought it was where you didn't any, any time go, why the fuck are you doing that? You should. No. And it's a very good hole. Oh, it's pure evil bad guy. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a small business. I'm going to stop it there. Thank you. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> I thought it was a generally good buzz there. Well, that's good, Dan. I think a definitely strong start to the whole thing, anyway. It had me feeling good about things. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, yeah, what awesome films have they chosen for us that are coming up? Oh, they did make a pledge at the start to ask us to be nicer while rating the films, because quite a lot of the films have got pannings over the last few years, and the select, the official selectors are like, you guys need to step up your game to pick some good films this year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you, you get a little bit of paper and you rate, you actually tear your rating off and hand it in at the end, so the entire oh, audience okay. does yeah it's it's a good system yeah it leads up to the um, every film is entered into the audience award okay basically so the best rated film which is never a horror film <laughs> wins or something because all horror films are free anyway so <laughs> average out yeah, free always as we've discussed all good ones <laughs> <Yes>. anyway <laughs> did we then have the short of awesome or was that after the next movie it's all got a bit blurry for me it's been a couple of weeks since oh, oh I always forget which order the shorts go in no the Fist, Fist of Jesus is a bit further away okay. a bit later in the night uh, I think it was the we opened with a box one where channel hopping yes cardboard boxes oh, yeah quite good actually uh, we had car- cargo oh cargo I yes believe. that's one I actually raved about on the last episode so um, little zombie short 
Um, I said it had a really original concept to it, which you can find on YouTube. So if you want to see it, it's up there. Most of these are, actually. Which is the thing I like about shorts. If you really like them, you can go back and watch them again when you get home. <laughs> so, but it's nice to see them on a big screen. Yeah, and, and happy birthday, Mr. Zombie, which was basically a birthday party. Oh, that was Zombie. brilliant! Yes! How could I forget that? <laughs> Candles, cake, uh, laid yeah. on for him by <laughs> fellow <laughs> zombies that he lives with. <laughs> And a little bit of trouble blowing out the candle is basically the plot. <laughs> it's very funny. <laughs> so, um, then the next, <clears throat> the next movie, also a comedy. No, sorry, not a comedy. <laughs> not supposed to be a comedy. Um, and this one puts us in a slightly awkward position because we actually, the, the rep from the sales company who brought this movie to the festival is actually following us on Twitter. And... Uh, said, oh, I wanted to check out your podcast, but I couldn't be bothered to write it down. So I, I did this and tweeted a picture of the back of my T-shirt. Because I was wearing my Pod Horrors T-shirt. And he's put hashtag creepy tweet. <laughs> he's basically just going to take the address of the show off that and then write it down later. And, and that's Raven Banner. And they brought the film Savaged. So I'm curious as to whether they might listen to the show because I do have some audio that we recorded after the movie. It's okay though because they also brought the best film of Day of the Dead. As ah, well, brilliant! So. Okay, good. It's it's offset. That's good to hear. In, in that case, I have no problem clicking play on this. Right, uh, two movies in. We've just watched Savaged. It's um, always a sign of a good film when they say the name of the film in the script. Well, she's a bit savage. Yeah, can we oh. talk about the script? The terrible, terrible, terrible script. Terrible they kept forgetting that the, the main character was death. My, favorite, was my favourite line in the script. This is an example of the fine writing. Something dead's been living here. Yeah, but no. <laughs> then, then his old husband corrected her and said, that's a bit stupid. Yeah, uh, so they even wrote it. I, was too, I was too busy laughing at the no, line. No, I, I yeah, quite liked... Husband went, you, how can something be dead? Or at the beginning oh, scene, we know that the two characters are in love with each other. We are in love with each other because he goes, "Yes, forever and ever yeah. and <laughs> ever." Yeah. And the yeah. ring that he got engraved. With I quite liked Danny when I kill forever. something, it's somebody they stay yes. dead. <laughs> yes. I, I like the part where he clearly ran out of budget for death scenes, so all the death scenes were taking place off camera. Yeah. <laughs> And hey, how about the way it was shot? You know, it was, oh, uh, I hate that shooting was e- style. Easy on the eyes, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yes, the entire film is in an Instagram filter. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, though, you, you stop noticing after... No, no, actually, oh, you don't. Oh, <laughs> you stop being painful after a while. <laughs> oh, it's, it's dedicated to someone. That's a shit. <laughs> Jeff <Conrad>. <laughs> <laughs> How bad is Jeff Conrad feel like having that film dedicated? They probably saw it. What did Jeff Conrad ever do to you? So the general feel here is derision. Maybe I'll um, synopsisise it on the show. (laughs) I don't know what you're talking about. It, it, that is up there. It does feature two amazing um, new thespian talents. I'm going to stop it there because they came on and started presenting things and sort of we petered out to a nothing. (laughs) Yeah, that was a fun film. Do you know what's hilarious? Rates better. Well, I say rates better than uh, 100 Bloody Acres on IMDb. Really? Yeah, but it's only had 18 votes. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm just looking at the votes at the moment, and there's obviously a high proportion of them have rated 10. <laughs> <laughs> That's the cast. Yeah. I, I was about to say, because the people who have rated it 10, and the breakdown is females aged 30 to 44, aged 45 plus, and males aged 45 plus. 
So I think the director's got his mom and dad on there to go and <laughs> <laughs> click the I like button or something. I wouldn't show this my mom and dad if I'd made it. Uh, what was it introduced <laughs> no. to us as? A cross between The Crow and I Spit on Your Grave. Great, yeah. <laughs> I mean, rather inappropriately, my mate got the giggles in the in the. Uh, oh, he did, at yeah. The start, oh, and he couldn't stop laughing. I was like, oh dear. And we were we were bewildered because we didn't know what set him off, and like he was getting some really odd looks. He was like, you probably shouldn't be laughing at this bit. He <laughs> turned out he was laughing because he said um, he'd watched recently watched the Rich Hall documentary on how the South is represented in American. Oh films. no! <laughs> this yeah. was the worst for that. Yeah, the opening uh, line were from the main characters who is deaf, um, not that the script writers remember that. <laughs> um, from her sister, apparently, even though it's clearly her mother, um, is like, oh, you're going to go to the South. You'll get raped and killed in the South. <laughs> and lo and behold, <laughs> she gets raped and killed, and then a, an Indian guy, a Native American, brings her back from the dead, but she's also possessed at the same time by a vengeful Native American demon. Yes. That decides to kill everybody that's involved. It's great. Because it just so happens conveniently that the leader of the bad guys is great, great something yeah. or other. Just happened to be the evil general who tortured and killed this tribal chief. So it's, yeah. It comes from a long, long line of genocidal. Yes. <laughs> Racist <laughs> genocidal. <laughs> oh, just... It was... It, it started sort of awful, and then the, the more the cliches played out, the funnier it got, and it became this completely <laughs> unintentional comedy. <laughs> we were not kind yeah, to it. it. We really weren't. The shout out. Stop looking at the camera. <laughs> <laughs> and the, then the volunteer guy was like, was that like, an ad reminded you for an advert for whiskey or something at the end? Because like the last shot is like this Native American and this, the boyfriend who's the biggest idiot in yeah. the world. Uh, zoom, like, zooming out shot. And one sat on the chair. One's looking wistfully. Yeah, into, into the, the distance. distance. <laughs> With this Instagram filter on everything. <laughs> it was just dreadful. <laughs> did, did we not then get the Fist of Jesus, though? Yeah, I think we got Fist of Jesus. Next. Let's just talk about Fist, Fist of, of Jesus. Fist of Jesus was my awesome. highlight of the night. <laughs> yeah. just, just bring a feature film out. <laughs> I know that they actually, they are going for funding. If you want to... I would say go to YouTube, look at this, we'll we'll put a link on the show notes for this one, I think. But yes, this this little short, they're trying to break into a bigger movie. Um, it's a, a Spanish little group, and <laughs> it starts off with Jesus doing his one of his sermons, and then someone's come running over, oh, it's your brother Lazarus, he's dead, he's dead, isn't he? Oh, he's not dead, he is merely sleeping. And it plays out as per the Bible. Um do, do I spoiler this? Do I spoiler this? <laughs> uh, it's only a short. It's really hard to talk about without spoiler it. Let's see what it says. It, right, yeah, okay. that's the safe way. This is what it says Says in the program. Mm. Jesus is always willing to lend a hand to those in need, but there are others that will taste his fist. <laughs> <laughs> From the makers of Brutal Relax, which everyone should also yes. check out, comes a completely OTT version of the ra- raising of Lazarus that you will definitely not find in the Bible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just go watch it. Yeah, it's, yeah. Amazing. it's not long. Um, but I just laughed out loud at this. And I, it's the one I came back and went straight to the website to see what they were up to. And uh, the way I'm going to support them is I'm actually going to, I have to buy myself a Fist of Jesus t-shirt. Oh, they sell Fist of Jesus t-shirts. <laughs> there's, there's this amazing moment. It doesn't actually spoil anything, but he... He's um, looking for some help, and he turns to... Who's with him? Judas is with him. And he turns to Judas and says, uh, what have you got? And he says, oh, we only have one fish. And uh, <laughs> this, because I'm learning <laughs> Spanish, uh, this just tickled... His delivery and everything just tickled me so much on this. And he went, no, son dos. <laughs> and he suddenly has two fish. Very rubbery looking fish. Uh, and I just don't know why that bit just slayed me. Definitely go see, check it out. It's on YouTube, let's say... Watch it, watch it, watch it. It is on YouTube, and I watched it last night, and it is hilarious. <laughs> Absolutely hilarious. You have to see Brutal Relax now, this is the one they did before as well, because that's a very similar. Yeah, very similar. Just with less, less is Jesus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think they also showed the uh, the the one with the clown, which uh, the Spanish one, Alistair, with a guy coming back. From oh the yes, tip revenge. Yeah, it was. Mm, there was mm, some terrible yeah. acting in that. 
again, this is where my... If it's a foreign language film and it's subtitled, you can just ignore the performance to a level and just read. And you don't always notice if the performance is bad. And again, because I'm starting to... I'm hearing some of it, like, and understanding it, I just thought, oh, God, he can't act. That's dreadful. <laughs> um, but it did pick up that one. It was it was a bit of fun, but only short, worthy. Please don't make that into a feature. <laughs> so. so the next movie on Night of the Dead was uh, uh, Nap Time for Me, and that was on air. Piratensender Nighthawk. Hier ist Doc Rock. Rock my word. Es ist wieder mal Samstagabend und höchste Zeit für eure nächtliche Befriedigung. Mit unserem messerscharfen Thema. Genau. Dem Nachtschlitzer. Wie schwer kann es denn sein, daran zu hindern, sein nächstes Opfer in Einzelteile zu zerlegen? dem Opfer die rechte Hand abgetrennt. Unehrlich. Auf Erstand. Die Stimme ist identisch, hörst du? Es ist der Nachtschnitzer. Und ein gewisser Doc Rock muss ihn davon abhalten, eine Frau zu töten. Wenigstens wissen wir jetzt, was in seinem Puzzle noch fehlt. Wir haben noch genau 17 Minuten. This wasn't great. No. Shall I read the synopsis of this one? Make it easier. Yeah. Uh, Nighthawk is a pirate radio station run by family man Doc Rock from his basement. His favourite topic of the moment is the vicious serial killer, the Night Slasher. I should have called him Night Stabber. That would have been funnier. Um, who he likes to badmouth live on air. Tonight, though, the tables have been turned as the Night Slasher is on the line and has an ultimatum for the fast-talking DJ. Keep him from killing his current victim before the end of the show, and he'll let her live. Doc Rock has to hear, has to bear, sorry, has to bear his soul without any chance of escape, as the killer seems to know his every move. It's kind of by the move, numbers slasher. Is really, is there a slasher? For Not like, really, because yeah. you don't really see him kill anyone. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't. Yeah. Spoiler, sorry. It's set up like serial killer slasher guy. Um, distinct. By the way. Night of the Dead, distinct lack of boobs. It's low red on the boobs. Yeah, this is as close as it got with um, sort of... Side boobs. Yeah, bulging bra shots, basically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's not much to say. There's... You didn't record anything, because we were just like... Yeah. Well, should, should we record something? I was like, no, I can't be arsed. <laughs> <laughs> so this was a horror movie where you didn't see people getting killed? It was more of like a psychological... Okay. He, he basically, the plot was this guy had captured this girl uh-huh. and was like, Slowly torturing her, and okay. off, off all the violence took place off yeah. screen. And, okay. um he was in contact with the DJ, and was saying like, "You have until X amount of time to admit your worst secret, mm. or choose a number, or I'm going to kill and, her." So. And he draw numbers on different body parts. So the number he chose was the bit he was going to cut off, which mm, was okay. sort of original, but he didn't really do anything with it. So, and I say I don't really know because I fell asleep about two thirds in. <laughs> And then there was about six million twists at the end. It was just like, we're going to have another twist, and another twist. And another yeah, there was twist. a twist over the credits. We all stood up to stretch our legs, and we turned back, looked at it, and went, um, I actually, that's lost me now. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> I missed that, because I already got up to, like, yeah. so I was like, and I came back, and you were like, yeah, it turned out that, uh, yeah, this happened. I was like, what? That's stupid. I'm glad I missed that. 
Um, well, as you mentioned toilets, right, this, this brings me to my, um, I said I was going to be very o- honest about the, the process of an all-night film festival, right? This place had the tiniest toilet you've ever seen in your life. Oh, yeah. Now, yeah, the toilet's not. Yeah. We should talk, before we get to this, we should probably talk about the venue, though, because it is celebrating its 99th birthday really? this year. Wow. Yeah, it's 99 years old, as a, so obviously it's had a few makeovers there, but there's not, there's not much you can do with a building that's 99 years mm. old and they can't make rooms larger no. so you've got this teeny tiny toilet downstairs <laughs> yeah. I mean no it's a fantastic venue and great character and a great place to be watching those kind of movies the problem is when you have as upset a stomach as I appear to have given myself that day <laughs> um, you may notice I disappeared a few times in the middle of movies I, I yeah. was in <laughs> agony mate I was suffering so badly <laughs> a part of my decision to leave early uh, what was, I need to get to a motorway services. <laughs> Is that too much information? Like a little oh, bit. <laughs> That's time, brother. <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah, it, it's not the place that you want to be having stomach no, issues. No, it really wasn't. <laughs> so, um, so that did mar my enjoyment a little bit, but um, yeah, uh, we should probably get on because we've got Day of the Dead to do. We've been ages. Yeah, but I, I was. I'm the only one at Day of the Dead, so it shouldn't okay. take me that long. <laughs> so we're going to go on to... Uh, is there any more shorts they need to talk about? Not really, I don't think... I think after Fist of Jesus, Jesus, everything paled into yeah. significance. <laughs> yeah, everything. Oh, there was the love one the, with the three voiceovers. The love triangle. <laughs> where it made it play out like a love story between a man and a woman. And then put a twist on it. <laughs> which was quite, kind of funny. Hold on, did I miss that? Possibly. It was only three minutes long. So oh, okay. So on one of your trips. <laughs> one of my trips. <laughs> anyway, um, so the next movie. Now, I really enjoyed the amount of this I could physically stay awake for. I had a, a slight problem in that the night before this festival, I'd been working in Leeds. Then I went to uh, our good friend Will Tristram's place um, and recorded a podcast of For Those About to Rock, found on the Simply Syndicated Network. Um, and after that, we tend to go out and get takeaways, drink beers, and just have a lot of fun, really. And that does not make for an early night. And <laughs> working the next day, and then had no nowhere to go. <laughs> so I couldn't do sort of the charge up on sleep for an all-night movie marathon. <laughs> so I tried desperately to sleep in the van in the car park. Oh, God, my van's uncomfortable. I need to get a festival mattress fitted out in the back, I think. <laughs> <laughs> So I got like 10 minute cat nap and then tried to stay up all night and then drive four hours home straight afterwards. So it it did not go entirely to plan. So I loved this next movie, but I did nod off towards the end of it, unfortunately. No more of that! No, 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 I got this. I got this. Okay. Okay, okay. My bad. Oh God, we gotta kill it. We gotta kill it. We gotta kill it. No! Oh, it's serious. It's gotta suffer bad. <laughs> This was called They'll Outlive Us yeah. All, which was uh, basically it was like set in New York in an apartment in the future where a series of hurricanes have like left New York on the brink of collapse. Mm. <laughs> and it was entirely made great. I thought it was great anyway. One of my friends did not think it was great, but I thought it was mm. great. Uh, entirely made by the chemistry of the two leads. Yes. It was a very low budget yeah. film. Uh, just very, very funny and the interplay with between them is so natural you're just along for the ride and uh, had me giggling along but they're basically getting invaded in their little apartment by nasties um which is what gives you the horror element obviously i'd whether to read the synopsis <clears throat> uh, I'll, I'll go halfway down because you just did the first bit 
but they, they survive by ignoring the world outside, getting drunk, watching horror films. But with three unexplained deaths in their building and some very dodgy looking green goo in the water and something unnatural running around their apartment, their safe little world is about to be violated in the worst way possible. It was fun. It was low budget. I did enjoy fun. it. I did enjoy it. Very, very low budget and very well done. And it didn't outstay as welcome. It was only 73 no. minutes long. <laughs> Speaking of outstaying as welcome, <laughs> I'm on my own now because Bob's bailed. Didn't you? How fun? Did you see much? Of I, I saw up to the, um, the, the, will she take the bra off? Won't she take the bra off? Is it going to finally oh, be some yeah, boobs in this? Is it there? And, there and I decided, <laughs> no, they're going to, they're going to flirt with the idea and not do it. And I really have to go now. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> But that, I was like, you're going to leave, there's going to be boobs. That, it was more the, no, the it was, no what, boobs. 8 o'clock in the morning by that time already. Um, and I just, yeah. I had to get back, basically. So. You, did, you didn't miss much. We're throwing a kick-ass New Year's party here tonight. So what happened with you and Dan? We broke up. You were posting comments, judging me on the social red room. Various student suicides and physical attacks in Burbank, Washington, have now been Something reported. Something Los Angeles takes the lives of 27... The world is an ending, Jed. The media hypes these events. He's infected. I'm okay, guys, honestly. What you are about to see is causing these hallucinations. We have to figure out what to do. I can't stay here. Brian, no! If anyone is watching this, How else can a virus spread worldwide in a day? This was Antisocial, which is a zombie film set in a house. Which begs the question, if you're going to set a zombie film in a house, you better make goddamn sure it is amazing. Otherwise someone's just going to say, you're Night of the Living Dead. <laughs> Might have heard of it. Yeah, don't bother if it's not at least this good. A bunch of five university friends have a house party on New Year's Eve. Uh, they're all stereotypical American teen drama sort of thing, you know, like. 20 or late 20s playing yeah early like late teens yes. people <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then zombies start appearing although it did have some cool ideas uh, can I spoil no one's gonna watch this <laughs> spoil it. well you've warned them they can go ahead sir yeah um, it turns out that the zombie virus is being spread by the red box which is a social network site see what they did there because they can't say Facebook um <laughs> that had updated its software to get people addicted to the website. Uh, unfortunately, they realised that this software had some flaws, so they tried to take the software down, but then the software developed its own defence system, which was basically turning people into zombies. <laughs> um, which is preposterous. Software yeah, it is preposterous. infecting the human body. Uh, but it led to some kind of cool scenes where they had the phones and the laptops and like tentacles were coming out like going into their mouths and different parts of the body oh, okay. eyes and stuff and then they had some uh, hallucinations when they were slowly changing with all the other people that had been infected going come join us it, it's great down here <laughs> um, the best bit of this film was the end where the lead character is left with a lead girl who's pregnant and the, her best mate who's a guy who she's never been with and he's like oh look they're meant to be together yeah. oh, but they never got together because you know he's turning into a zombie um <laughs> And it turns out the, there's a procedure to cure you, which basically involves drilling into your head <laughs> and then pulling something out <laughs> right. that's implanted on the bra- bra- brain. And unfortunately for her, he gets knocked out. Uh, he gets killed. Mm. Or turns into a zombie. She has to kill him. So she has to perform this procedure on herself. Which is why it has the plot start at the beginning. Plot point at the beginning where she's scared of blood. Ah, uh, I see. Um, 
Yeah. So that did come back around. Yeah, she's a criminologist and wants to be a crime scene investigator. But she's scared of blood <laughs> and it makes her throw up. <laughs> Maybe not the fertilizer of choice. No. And then she gets she gets out of the house and the entire street is just littered with cars like there's been some sort of destruction derby going on. <laughs> it's just like, how many cars were in this cul-de-sac? <laughs> and then it's like, news report comes back on. Uh, yeah, all the zombies that we thought were dead are all coming back to life again. So she's covered in blood with this axe, and all the zombies are rising back up to life, even the ones that were already dead. And it just ends original. There. And it's like that's the film I want to see. I don't want to see the the, the boring house movie with like shit. Acting. <laughs> the no budget version. <laughs> Give me the lots of yeah. budget version. <laughs> so that brought an end to Night of the Dead. Uh, only an hour and ten minutes behind schedule. Uh, which, considering the year before, we didn't get out until 11 o'clock in the morning. It was a welcome change. Yeah. <laughs> that would have killed me. <laughs> uh, which then moves on to the Day of the Dead, which is why I'm actually here. <laughs> yeah, like this, um, obviously, Boz couldn't make it to this. Day of the Dead is known for having better quality of films on, and it takes place during the day, the following Saturday. Um, at, this year was at the Town Hall because it grown too big for its previous venue, mm. which is a shame because its previous venue was the City Varieties, which is a music hall, which is a lovely place. Oh, wow. But they moved the Town Hall for bigger, yeah, bigger screen and can fit more people in. Uh, and this opened up with the best film that I saw at the two events, mm. uh, which I'm going to highly recommend. Called the it's another zombie film called The Battery. Oh, I did wonder. <laughs> also by this... Raven Banner, so they do awesome movies too. Just saying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Also, this was their film. Come back, all it's forgiven. Um, this is a zombie film that's a road trip movie, buddy movie sort of thing. There's basically two guys. They're not really friends. They've been on the same baseball play, uh, baseball team. Um, they've got personalities that clash. One's really embraced the zombie apocalypse. He's all for moving on every day, every night, mm. sort of thing. Um, like not staying, in it. and the other one locks himself out. Mm. He's typified by the fact that he listens to music all the time on his uh, portable CD player, uh, and he has a big back back full of batteries. And then there's a really tenuous link to why the it's called the ba- battery. <laughs> but ignoring that tenuous link, um, their partnership again is like the light of us all. It's what makes the film. They're really good together. Um, the guy who's also a director and wrote this is uh, Jeremy Gardner. Is the better one as Ben, who's like the one that's like, let's embrace this. He keeps a score check of how many zombies he's killed and stuff Yay. like that. And, uh, and then there's some other elements that come into it that I don't really want to go into because it'll spoil. No, I'm definitely watching the surprising this. Thing is, <laughs> yeah, the surprising thing is it's made for a grand total of six thousand dollars. Whoa! And wow. you watch it and you're like, this does not look like a film that was only made for six thousand uh, dollars. Also, it's got a great soundtrack. I was like, I want this soundtrack. Um, <laughs> you can go check out the YouTube. I don't. F- I've watched the trailer. The trailer didn't really spoil much, uh, but I highly recommend cool. that. Go check that out. Um, like all best zombie films, it's not actually about the zombies. Mm. It's about the interplay between the characters yes. that are in it and the humans, and it's, it has some interesting twists and turns. They can take our bones and bury them deep under the river, but we'll still be together, and we cannot be defeated. They can take our trombones and pack them down there with us, but no matter how long it takes us, we will not be defeated. When we dance, we dance together under the moon and under the I want to sleep in a house, in a bed, like a real human. You need to wake up and realize this is how it is out here now. Nobody's going to flip the switch back on.
Now, the second film, I'm not sure I'm allowed to review a film I walked out of after only 15 minutes <laughs> to go to the pub. Oh, the Strange Colour of Your Body's Tears, a Jalo film. <laughs> I already knew I was onto a loser because I don't like Jalo films. It's just the Italian slasher genre, basically. Um, oh, how funny. Carry on. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. In the opening 15 minutes, it had more cuts than the entire Michael Bay film. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah. It's like, look at ah, look how stylish we can be with a camera. Now we're going to have a shot where the two characters are speaking. This is the part I walked out of. They had the two characters, a copper, basically a woman. I can't, obviously can't tell you much about the plot because I only saw the first 15 <laughs> minutes. A guy had come home, found his wife was missing, and then lots of crazy shits going on in his house. There was boob in this. This was the first boob. Of of the of day or night, <laughs> but there was lots of cutting going on, and they had a cut where they had one mouth on one side of the screen, and then the other mouth on the other side of the screen, just the mouth, oh. nothing else. Uh, and then they cut it again, so one mouth was on the bottom of the screen, and the eyes of the other person was on the top of the screen, and they were talking. I was like, no, I'm out, <laughs> I'm off, I'm off to the pub. That's it. <laughs> I'm not watching this. It's shit. Stop it. <laughs> I, I'm, it it's now odd. my mission to watch and complete this film and then love it because that seems to be what happens between you and me. No, <laughs> no you, you will not love this film, Baz. You want to punch the director. But I like the genre. <laughs> uh, I, uh, see, at the previous year, there'd been a Jello film called Masks, which I'd laid into for doing some really stupid shit plot wise. Like the woman escaped. It was set in modern day in a boarding German boarding school, and she'd escaped and found the like where all, they'd hid all the mobile phones. And instead of just picking up the first mobile phone and calling the police, uh, now she looks through about twenty mobile phones to get to her mobile phone and then calls her boyfriend, <laughs> not the police, her boyfriend. And I was like, "Fuck you! <laughs> you deserve everything that's coming to you right now." <laughs> Um, my mate did stick through this. Uh, there were four of us in. There was me, Lee, Dylan, who was at night, and Dylan's dad. Uh, not Dylan's dad. Lee's dad, okay. who had taken the free ticket, mm. and he left after. The, well, he. I left after fifteen minutes. Lee and his dad left after twenty minutes, only because they had to finish their beers that they'd already bought. And then Lee's dad was just like, "I'm off. I'm out. I didn't like either of them films." But damn, I should have come. Yeah, well, yeah, uh, Dylan made it his mission to sit through every film that he went to go see, which included a four-hour epic Filipino film that was not horror, um, as, and he said afterwards could have been edited down to an hour for all the story that was in it. Damn, oh my <laughs> but, God. Yeah, this, this film is just not me. I was just like, I'm out. And all the Twitter responses afterwards were either, like, three people saying, that was amazing, and everyone else going, that, what a pile of shit. <laughs> Which reasons on to the short films, which is the Sylvie, Silver Melier competition, mm. which is um, basically a series of, there was about nine, there was 11 on show, but two had already won. What well, they, they have a rotation between these film festivals, what are they called? The Fantastic Film Festival Federation, European Fantastic Film Festival Federation, okay. which has in acronym EFFFF. <laughs> It just rolls off the tongue. Um, what it is is lots of short films are shown at different film festivals around Europe. The audience or a judge or a panel of judges choose the, the favourite, and that goes on to the end of the year competition, uh, which goes up for the Golden Melier. So they all get all the winners get together and they basically have the competition for the best one. I'm not going to go through all these because there were quite a few. Say. <laughs> there was one directed by if you've ever watched Emmerdale. Uh, by Paddy. Oh, really? <laughs> cool. Yeah, he actually had a feature film the year before at the film festival, a zombie film called Before Dawn, which was okay. It, it wasn't spectacular, but it was watchable. Uh, his was called Shell Shocked, which featured Nazi zombies. What else should I pick out? Hunger, which was a very short film, which starts off with this family of four in the desert playing Russian roulette and has quite a shocking end scene. <laughs> As Russian roulette often uh, does. <laughs> it, yeah. uh, which I imagine will be on YouTube or on the internet somewhere. It's worth checking. It's only two minutes long. It's worth okay. checking out. Um, just for the final shot, they had one called Relic, spelled R E L L I K. Oh, Gordon, Gordon, it's yours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, which was filmed back, which was 
shown the story backwards so it started off with a woman getting killed in a boot of a car by these people in creepy masks and then worked backwards to when they attacked her the first time which was okay hmm. it, it, it was the ad was atmospherically nicely shot but my favorite by far which won ah. uh, was death of a shadow which was about a world war one um soldier who was shot during world war one and then given a chance of life again if he collects ten thousand shadows using this special camera kind of steampunky camera right. of people that are dying for this creepy old man that wants people's shadows and then he hooks into them and that like experiences a moment of death for his like sexual thrills and but it explores there's another one you can't really say much about mm. because you'll spoil the where it goes but it, what does it say and yeah it's it's moving it's but it's not really hot it's got horror elements just because he's hunting down these dead like shadows mm. and stuff but it's more about relationships and love and stuff like that uh, which else? Oh, there was a really horrible one called Raw Meat that was is actually in the Night of the Dead Shorts section for some reason, which was featured a cannibal that invited someone over and then like chopped off the guy's penis and then fr- fried his penis and ate his penis. Lovely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's just the second short film I've seen at one of these things that involved a man. <laughs> it is, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> it was one the previous year. Interesting. Uh, involving mayonnaise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was kind of just sick, to be honest, Raw Meat. But, um, so we're going to move on now. So, of that, I'd recommend Death of a Shadow, Hunger, uh, Relic. Um, we're going to move on now to the next film, which was a Spanish? No, French film. That's Swiss. <laughs> Swiss, but it's in French. <laughs> um, called Chimeres. Chimeras, or something. Uh, I, I say every time I try to do foreign, I always come out Spanish. Sorry. <laughs> you do, yeah. Something like that. The, the director pronounced it right. Slagged off the guy who did it, <laughs> who introduced it. <laughs> it was like the only one you did it. Who that? He. This guy had actually had a short that uh, had been played a few years ago, um, and this is his first feature film. was a nice take on the vampire basically a guy gets knocked down in he's on holiday with his girlfriend in Romania he gets knocked down has a blood transfusion uh, then reads when he's back in Paris about contaminated blood and gets under the impression that he's turning into a vampire and it sort of plays quite a lot of the film plays out is he a vampire or is he just going nuts uh-huh. and there's quite a lot of cool effects in that place I don't even ever seen the film Martin no no, uh, no, by George A. Romero, uh, which is a film along a similar theme where the guy, uh, that's more playing with the audience because you don't know the in Martin, the artist, the audience that don't know if he's a vampire or not. He's just a nutter. It's just about a guy that drains people's blood and drinks it, and it's like he thinks he's a vampire, but it's never really shared. And this goes along similar lines. It does take a twist towards the end, which I won't spoil, uh, which well acted. It seems to drag him places for mm. me, but you know, it's always it's always nice. When um, a vampire film is not don't feature spark <laughs> <laughs> monstrosities, <laughs> oh, we, you know we're generous towards those on this show. <clears throat> We've had yeah. a bit of, <laughs> I know how much you guys love. We've had a little bit of vitriol on that basis. <laughs> <laughs> so. But it, it was cool. It had some like the, the is the slow descent into is it madness? Is he a vampire? And then it goes somewhere completely different towards the end, which I won't spoil 
um, because I would recommend that you guys check this out. Uh, and then we get on to... If you wander off too far, my love will... <laughs> כמו כל מעשייה, גם הסיפור שלנו מתחיל עם זה. איפה הילדה? מה? איזה ילדה? גם הוא, כמו כל יתר הזאבים, אוהב להפתיע ילדות קטנות. רק כשהבן זונה האכזרי שלנו לא מסתפק בלבלעות. זאב אגב זה אתה. אני רוצה לדעת איפה הוא קבר את הראש של הבת שלי. יצא הגורל והוא ימות בתהליך, עיבודה ואי ספיקת חמצן. לא תראה אותי בוכה. אתה רוצה לדבר על אסטרטגיה לפני? אסטרטגיה? היה שוטר טוב, שוטר רע. אין פה מקום לשוטרים טובים. תקשיב לי טוב, טיפטיפון. אני הולך לעשות לך את כל מה שעשית לילדות המסכנות האלה. אצבע אחרי אצבע, ציפורן אחרי ציפורן, עד שהראש שלך... גלגל הרצפה. אתם לא נורמליים. Big Bad Wolves film. Yeah. <laughs> Which you've been looking forward to seeing. I Now, have I been. Preface, preface this by saying that a lot of the Twitter responses like were really good afterwards. And also preface by saying it has an awesome opening title credit scene. Um, which is... Basically what this film is about is there's been lots of... There's been like serial killer killing children... And his latest victim, uh, the father of his latest victim, is out for revenge while there's a dirty copper also out to bust the case wide open um, by using methods that are probably not best used. Uh, he gets kicked off the force for these and then it dissolves into like the interplay between the suspect, uh, the copper and the father out for revenge. Mm. Now, I really liked the opening half hour of this film. I really like the door playing it up um, there's also got some comedic elements that really work it's very finely acted um, although they do play the same joke about three times which I suppose is the rule of three <laughs> yeah. the problem I really have with this film is I can't discuss the problems I have with this film because it's all to do with the end game <laughs> and where it goes which makes it really hard to review <laughs> with two guys that want to see the film and haven't seen the film and all of everyone else I will say that it is brilliantly made it's just the story lets it down and I I will put my hand and say that I knew where this was going about 40 minutes before the end of the film uh, okay. well that sets up your next appearance nicely then doesn't it <laughs> yes when you've watched <laughs> Big Bad Wolves we'll have a spoilerific okay. thing because I, I felt like let down by the ending lots of other people thought the ending was amazing Uh, so it's really one that you're going to have to watch and make your own judgment of. I mean, I don't have anything against... I, I give it three stars out of five, uh, which I think is about right. It's a horror movie. You know, it's a bit... <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. <laughs> it's a very... Fa- well, it's not really horror, though. It's more of a thriller. Mm. Crime thriller. It's more like... if Would you class seven as a horror yeah. film? Uh, <laughs> it's... Well... Mm, but it's less violent, sort of, than mm. seven. I mean it has that elements in it because um, the way they're going about trying to get revenge and get the details on the killer uh, on the person mm. is like okay um, that's interesting but um, 
and they add comedy elements. But if you watch this film and you've watched these kinds of films before, I'd be very surprised if you don't get where it's going. Okay. As, as soon as I did. But check it out, let me know what you think, and I'll come back on when you've actually had a chance to See, watch. while you were prefacing it, I would have said to preface it with, um, this is from the man who didn't like martyrs. <laughs> exactly, yes. <laughs> oh, this is a better film than Mars. <laughs> And that case is the best film ever, ever made. Ever. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you <really> idiots. <laughs> okay, I think what we should do probably is when we see Big Bad Wolves, then we can get on and all three of us can talk about yeah. it. And as you're the only one so far who is prepared to offer a dissenting opinion on Martyrs, <laughs> then we can talk about that at the same time as well. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's been like. 2008 is the only time I ever watched Martyrs, and that was at Day of the Dead, funnily enough. Ah, you better watch it again. <laughs> yeah, you might enjoy it I more the next watch time. It again? No, I don't want to watch <laughs> French Pretentious Wank again. Don't let me do it. <laughs> uh, so, yep, yeah, that wraps up Day of the Dead. Like I said, Big Bad Wolves, go watch it. You might have a completely different opinion, or you just might have the same. I do hope to make but both it, days next year. Mm, if you make both days, you get a discount for buying both. Ah, tickets. cool. Right. That's good to know. I, yeah, I believe you get it's like ten pound cheaper overall. I'll just do what I did this year and go with you guys to Night of the Dead and let one of you win the ticket for this for the day. <laughs> <laughs> we should explain how they won the ticket, right? They, because they're famous for overrunning on Night of the Dead, they decided to run a book on what time it would actually finish. <laughs> so people just wrote a time on a bit of paper, and the one who got nearest won. And Lee won. There we go. <laughs> Yeah, Lee, Lee and this other girl won. And they didn't actually... You wouldn't have seen this. They didn't actually... Did you see the part where they didn't actually have Yeah, they didn't have a ticket. They said, you could just take a picture yeah. of us holding this piece of cardboard. Yeah. <laughs> Lee, Lee took in his half of the cardboard and the picture the day after. And they were like, yeah, we're going to have to contact them to make sure this is legit. <laughs> <laughs> so just take this picture to the ticket office. <laughs> uh, brilliant. Uh, I, I do just want to mention one other film uh, that I saw that was sort of horror. Well, it had horror, horror mm. elements. It was more of comedy than horror. It was called Ghost Graduation, and it's a Spanish film, which was described as Six Sense meets The Breakfast Club, and it was hilarious and brilliant, and everyone Oh, that sounds it. awesome. Are you looking, eh? Just on the key. Who is Claro. Están igual que tú muertos. ¿Y cuál es su asignatura pendiente? Estás de coña. Cuando alguien se muere y se queda en este mundo es porque tiene una asignatura pendiente. Y estas son las vuestras. Qué bajona me está entrando. Todos los alumnos del Colegio Monforte que no estén vivos reúnanse con la directora en la vieja biblioteca. ¿Y es verdad que la primera vez duele? No, qué va. ¿Y a los vivos? Los vivos. Que se jodan los vivos. Necesito poseer a alguien ya. Mira, pues entras, llamas y sales. Soy la romera de Babilonia. Rápido, antes de que mate la gallina. Esta tía me la cabe. ¡Oh, mola! ¡Pimple! Está ahí a tu lado, no a la derecha. A la tuya o a la mía. A la tuya, a la tuya. Profesores que dimiten, accidentes continuos, alumnos con pesadillas. ¡Vale! Propongo el nudismo. por la generación del 27. Generación del 27 y una K47747 que te pete en el ojete paquete. Perdón. I watched a trailer similar to that, but it was an American film. Similar sort of setup. Interesting. I'll have to see that. Oh, maybe they've remade it for English audiences already. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah if not, it only came out last year. They, just, they did that with Silent House. That's our Silent House. That... And then next thing I know, it's like, yep, yeah, Silent House, remade by Americans. There's, there's one I have to ask you, because I, I, I have no idea how you managed to watch so many movies. Um, 
Because this festival is enormous. <laughs> how how long does it run? Two, three weeks. Two, two weeks. weeks. So you took two yeah. weeks off and just watched movies every day. Yep, pretty much two weeks off, and I saw forty eight films. Average three point two a day at a price averaging price of one pound eighty two a film. Bargain. Well, there. Yep, you can't complain with that. Did you see Santa Sangre? No, I didn't. Ah, because I um, thought you might have had something to say about that. That's a shame. <laughs> no, I didn't see that film. It was on at the same time as other oh, films I that I want to see that have nothing to do with the horror genre. <laughs> okay. That was on the same night that I saw Con- Cannibal Holocaust, ah. where the director was there. That that was awesome. They, they had a Q and A with the director before the film because you know he's old and it started at like eleven mm, yeah. PM, so he didn't want to do it. Q&A at like 1 o'clock in the morning <laughs> or something and the Q&A went on for overran by like 40 really? minutes and not like there was only two questions asked by the guy he just talked for 40 minutes oh, wicked and shared stories <laughs> just shared stories oh. it's on you I wonder if they've put it up they filmed it so the Q&A I believe is on I'll have YouTube. to watch that uh, yeah it's great he slags off the Blair Witch Project while like thanking it for giving him <laughs> um, his film stuff at the same time it's like yeah but shit did my prediction come true because I predicted that either the first or the second question would be about turtles yeah there was a question about uh, killing of animals and they were like they asked him did you regret killing the animals and he was like I regret it but when I watch the film back and there is actually a version out there where there's not animal killing mm. uh, it does it takes away from the film yeah uh, he also was like he blamed the Asians as well for making him kill animals oh okay there's yeah, it was like the agent, the, the the agent producers or whoever it was that was funding wanted him to kill animals for, for the Asian market because they love that shit. Apparently, <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. You heard it here second. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone was like, right, okay. And then it got to the point where, apart from the pig, when they killed the pig, it was because the Western actors were like, we've just been eating fish for like four weeks or something yeah. can we eat the pig <laughs> they're like okay let's kill the pig on screen and then we'll eat the pig <laughs> so they, yeah, that's how that well, at least they killed it for a purpose I suppose that's the only slight caveat but yeah I'm not sure it should have been filmed though that's probably a step too far uh, yeah so he did express regret but then it was also like well it's done now and it adds to the film so okay. I was really shocked by that I've never seen that film before and it, it still has an impact and it mm. was oh, um, hell. a film that was like so the cannibals are the good guys, yeah, because <laughs> they blatantly are. Because the documentary crew, are yes, they are. I remember that epic proportions. It's got to be twenty years since I saw that movie. I'd, I'd, I'd be really curious to watch it again, just to see what kind of effect it does have now. But um, yeah, I'd like to have made it to that as well. But yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. That I, I pre-booked a taxi because it was like Friday night, and I was like, "Well, I'm gonna." Have to. I had to be up for Day of the Dead the next day as well, so I was like, "Okay, I pre-book a taxi at two o'clock." Because mm. there was a documentary about the making of af- on Afterwork, which was forty oh, right. minutes, and that had only just started when I got my taxi home at two o'clock. Jeez. In the morning. <laughs> Jeez. I was like, "I'm not staying for this. <laughs> I need to be up and watch horror films tomorrow." Well, the reason I asked you about Santa Sangre is it's made by the same director who did that El Topo film, The Mole, that I talked about the other week. <laughs> They're just oh, right. the random Jesus and a mountain figure after randomly a cowboy killing people in the desert. I just think, <laughs> I just yeah, I wouldn't watch it. I just thought if you'd put yourself through that kind of pain, that you might have something to say. But yeah. uh, no, I didn't okay. see it. <laughs> right, well we've we've Sorry. hit the two hour mark on this show. <laughs> we're really gonna have to buck her off. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> At least I only have to listen to an hour of it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, brilliant. Thank you very much, Jonathan. So that was a lot of fun. Um, thank you, Jonathan, and yourself, Boz, for That's right. sharing your your experiences from that day. Unfortunately, it sounds as though Night of the Living Dead was a bit of a wash, from a good, from a good movie perspective, anyway. Yeah, I, I, the shorts really made up for it, I have yeah. to say. Um, and and the, the two guys, I, I feel terrible. I'm like, I, I should have got their names, um, the two guys who present in between each movie. Actually, as I was leaving they were sitting out front talking um and i did get to talk to them and i said you know i've, I've got to go because i'm doing a four-hour drive They're like what so yeah i'm driving straight to surrey now <laughs> you're mad so, yeah um, yeah I said, but I, i've really enjoyed it and i will be here next year because just a brilliant atmosphere really yeah. really good fun that sort of makes it more worth it is the atmosphere yeah yeah i mean they're like a stand-up routine in between each film those two <laughs> <laughs> it's just really funny That's um good. 
Uh, just to add the, uh, some people may have seen the tweets I put and wonder what the hell it was with the hashtag, but um, I think the only one I can remember was the, what was it called? Savaged. Um, Zoe, the de- the deaf and mute girl who comes back and kills lots of people. And uh, I think the tagline I sent is, when Zoe comes back from the grave, they'll be held to peyote, which I was quite pleased with. But anyway. <laughs> That's the only one I can remember saying. So that that that's a bit of fun. I sh- must try harder. I'll do better next year. Must, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's difficult when it's like early in the morning. So yeah, you can't keep the brain functioning. <laughs> um, we should probably get the hell out of here. <laughs> we should. Sorry, people. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, you all have enjoyed the show. And if you have seen any of those movies um, that Jonathan or Boz saw. Um, or have your own thoughts on Big Bad Wheels you'd like to share with us? Um, then please do continue to send all the feedback into the little pod of horrors at gmail dot com. Um, remember the little competition we said at the beginning, people. I know it might feel as though you heard that competition like four weeks ago, um, but it was only two hours ago, honest. Um, <laughs> and you've got to get your little treatment in for putting Boz and I in a horror movie. And trust me, you want to win one of these t-shirts, the <laughs> awesome limited edition t-shirts. Absolutely. It's, and who exactly. knows, if your treatment's good enough, maybe bloody cuts will make it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm done. It's fine. <laughs> hey, we could say it to them and say it's our own idea. Shh. Shh. Do. In fact, funnily enough, bloody cuts are doing their own film challenge at the moment. We should have talked about that. It's probably oh, over by. It's yeah, probably over by now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> If it's not over by now, go to bloodycuts.co.uk. These guys have put together a fantastic short horror film competition. Mm. Huge prizes. Huge, huge prizes. Um, Huge directors involved as well. I mean, these guys, wow, amazing. (laughs) Okay, so we're going to get the hell out of here. (laughs) Um, So so thank you, sir, for a fun show. Thank you. Um, (laughs) We'll speak to you all soon. Bye-bye. Goodbye. If you would like to send an email to the show, please do so at thelittlepodofhorrors at gmail.com. Also, why not go along to the website at www.thelittlepodofhorrors.com and from there you can find links to our Twitter, Facebook, Google+, forum and blog page. Thanks for listening. Asked by a waiter yesterday, you look like somebody famous. I'm like, do I? I said, I'm not really. And I was wearing my Pod of Horrors t shirt. I said, well, I do a, I do a podcast. <laughs> and they went, now nah, you look like Chris Moyles. I was like, fuck off. <laughs> you bastard. He goes, you're tip, you fucker. Yeah. 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 Sucker, yeah, sucker, yeah, sucker, yeah, sucker, yeah, sucker, yeah.